Hi, welcome to Above Life channel. I'm Bridget. Today, I have a wonderful afterlife conversation with two very beautiful, let's just say that because it's the truth, two very beautiful people. This couple actually went into the afterlife together and I just spoke with the mom, mother-in-law, and she recommended I speak to them next. So I am. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. I hope that this interesting conversation does that for you today. Please help me welcome my guests today from the afterlife, Mr. John Kennedy Jr. and his beautiful wife, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. Thank you both so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I feel like we're kind of doing an actual more formal interview. They came and they sat down. He came in first with a uh, like a dark navy blue suit on and a white shirt. He's got a blue tie. It's a lighter blue tie, not a royal blue, a light blue tie. Looks like some white and a little bit of gold in there and maybe a little bit of gray stripes kind of at an angle. And um, she actually has what looks kind of like a white... Um, an ivory colored kind of a dress, uh, a little bit of a silky kind of a soft kind of a dress. And there's like a layering piece over the top of it that's really long, like almost down, like past mid calf. And it's like a lighter, it kind of comes um, um, just mid arm up, kind of a, a, a sheery covering kind of over it. And again, it's like an ivory color, very beautiful. Thank you. She says, thank you. She's got long hair. Um, it's a little bit wavy. It's blonde, but it looks a little um, golden kind of colored, a little golden, almost red, but not red. That's not the right way to say it, but a little bit uh, golden. And then um, she is, is she, uh, one of the things I noticed right away about um, Carolyn is that she has a necklace that is significant. She's pointing to a necklace and I can see it. It's not just a round necklace that comes down in there. It's either a pendant or it's got like this little shape to it like a teardrop or an oval or something, there's a shape, it's not square, it looks different than that to me when I'm looking at it and it's significant, just a simple, beautiful necklace. Thank you, she says, thank you. Um, I'm looking at her wedding ring too and it looks pretty big, good job, John, very nice. Um, but it looks like it's um, either platinum, like it's silver, it looks like, a little bit around the edges. And then in between I can kind of see gold. I don't know why I would see the gold unless it's reflecting off something else, but it kind of looks platinum or silver. Um, I'm assuming that's the wedding ring or the engagement ring. It might just be a gift ring, but it's something significant, so we're pointing that out um, as well. Okay, and something. She has a piece of jewelry from um, Jacqueline, from your mom. I, she just acknowledged that. I have, a, I have jewelry from um, his mom, his mother, gave me something um, after we got engaged. She gave me something. Okay, thank you. All right, beautiful. Um, yeah, the necklace was a gift. I don't know if it was from John or from Jacqueline. All right, so I have to start off by asking you this question. Um, John, this question is for you. Uh, did people call you John John a lot? <laughs> Even as you were a grown man, did they call you John John? <laughs> and he laughs. He kind of straightens his, uh, the pant leg of his kind of right knee. His right leg is crossed over kind of at an angle uh, laterally across his um, other leg. And, and his wife's kind of close to him and they're, hold, they're holding hands. And he kind of straightens the knee of his suit. And he says, <laughs> good question. Yes, um, it, as you would expect, right? Okay, so I also get the impression of you playing football. Did you play football? Um, I tried to catch a football a few times. Yes, you could say I've, uh, I've tried to catch a football a few times. You know, that runs in the family, right? The Kennedy boys certainly um, like to uh, rough house. And I think that that was something that's in our blood, you know. And even my uncle would... Uh, you know, he kind of got a little bit rough with some of us. Okay, so Uncle, like, Robert, it looks like Bobby. Yeah, 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 definitely, you know. They just, they kind of let you have it, you know. And uh, so he's, like, sharing. Like, he feels, like, uh, happy, fond memories of childhood growing up um, around the big family. So big family, is that, that's something that you just, that's all you knew, right? Yeah, yes, he said, yeah, yeah. And uh, he said, but she didn't. 
he's pointing to Caroline and he says, um, or Carolyn, I'm sorry, Carolyn? Carolyn? Okay. Because I don't know if I should call you Caroline or Carolyn. Carolyn. Okay. Carolyn. Lynn. Lynn is the, she's distinguishing. Lynn, L-Y-N. Lynn. Okay. Um, he said, she didn't. And then she's kind of saying, yeah, she kind of looks down. She said, it took some getting used to. You know who she reminds me of, you guys, the viewers? Um, uh, uh, like her or don't like her, however you take it. She kind of reminds me of Gwyneth Paltrow. That's kind of the look she has to me, a little bit of that. Um, but she feels very different. Um, she feels much more... Um, she feels uh, authentic, uh, approachable. And um, very much in love with her husband, actually. You two do feel like lovebirds. They do. They really do feel connected. Um, but John, you were saying that, um, Carolyn, you did not have a, you did not have a big family? No, small, much, much smaller than John's for sure. Okay. But we want, but you wanted a big family, the two of you? She says, but we wanted a big family the two of us we wanted to be I would have been fine with you know maybe two or three children but he wanted like five you know so we would have had to and then John says we would have had to negotiate that I would we would have definitely had to negotiate that and uh, all right so how um all right I so John you your love life as a person you dated a lot of different famous people and such and you were considered a, like a major bachelor in fact I think I remember one of the magazines I don't know if it was people or time or something um, considered you like the the ultimate um, uh, most successful bachelor or something like that I don't remember um, but I remember that like you being single and and the the women in your life um, that you dated. Um, I can actually see one, but I can't think of her name. She's the same woman that I think actually, oh gosh, I can't think of Michelle Pfeiffer. Is it Michelle Pfeiffer? Um, and okay, so, but when you met Carolyn, how how did you know? I guess, how did you know that she was the one you know, that was going to marry you, or, you know, that kind of a thing. And Carolyn, did you know, like, that he was the one that you were going to marry? And, and did you have any reservations about that because of all these other women and such? You know, let's be, let's be clear on that. Um, and John says, um, I think I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first. They feel very much in love, you guys. Okay, so Carolyn says... <laughs> She says it's sort of, she's likening it to um, when William and Kate got married in the United Kingdom. She's likening it to that, where they knew each other, they were in the same circles, or not that far out from each other. And so when they had the opportunity to actually meet and really connect, then it just sort of happened. It just seemed, she's saying it just seemed very natural. Very, very natural for the two of them to be together. And then she's saying, it seems like when, it seemed like when we were together, we were, it was just normal. It, it's like it had always been that way. And um, he kind of says, and not, he says, and he interrupts and he says, and not like an old married couple. He says, don't say that. Don't call us an old married couple. Oh, I won't, I won't. Um, I feel like you guys got married quick. I feel like six months or something. Um, and he says, well, I loved her. I, I knew I, it was just, it was just different with her. It was, he, and this is John speaking. And he says, it was easy. It, it was very natural. It was very comfortable. And she's beautiful. She is very beautiful. It was just all there, all the parts, all the pieces, all the things that you might want. It was just all there, you know? he says, and he just looks at her like very adoringly. They, they are very much in love. And so, okay, so I'm going to ask you, I feel like you were pregnant, um, Carolyn, when you died. Is that true? She says, yes. Yes, I was. And I don't know if that's public. I'm assuming it would be, but I don't know. I feel like you were pregnant. She said, yes. Um, and I know you died in a plane crash together, and I feel like it was very windy. 
is what it feels like to me. Like the weather was very windy and it feels dark. I don't know if it's dark because there's a storm. I feel like there's a lot of winds and I feel like it's by the ocean. And I feel like the plane is being pushed and like a gust of wind and it pushed the plane and it, you couldn't gain control. And I feel like, um, I think you're in the water. I think you hit the water is what it looks like to me. Um, so I, it's important here at Above Life Channel to give the viewers the understanding of your perspective about transitioning into the afterlife. That's a really important part of, of the videos so that people can understand about death and the transition between the difference between life and then afterlife. So can you, both of you share with me, um, either together or, or, in, or individually, what, what was it like? Um, did you know you were going to die? If you can dial back to the time right before um, the plane crash, did you know you were, you were, this was it, this was done, we were done? And Caroline says, or Carolyn, I'm sorry, Carolyn, trying to say it right, Carolyn says it was there wasn't much time she says there was not much time there wasn't much time really to think about anything and john was just doing his best to try to gain control of the plane and it, it, the altitude was affecting the oxygen level and so the the there was kind of a almost like a lightheaded confused state like in the head so She's saying there really wasn't a lot to feel. I mean, there, there is fear, like you're, you're afraid because you're, you know that the situation is dangerous and you're, you know you're, I was aware, she says, I was aware that we were cra going to crash. And he was just trying to, you know, manage things and would not give up until, he, he never gave up. John never gave up. He was very brave, never gave up. And... I don't know that there was time to really think about anything, to process any of that. I mean, John, how about you? It's like she said, he says, it's like she said, I was just really, I was trying desperately to gain control back, to get the instruments to work, to get the, the plane to respond, and it just was not whatever I did. Nothing was responding. It was like there was no, um, it's like there was no power at all, but yet you could still hear the, the, the beeps and the noises. Like I, he's, there, he's, there, he's making me hear the, the things in the, um, the cockpit and stuff. But right all the way until the moment that everything ended, everything stopped, I was trying to, I was just focused on gaining control of the plane. So I, I, didn't, I didn't have any time to think about any of that. So once you entered into the afterlife, can you talk about that, what that was like? And then she says, she looks at him and she says, well, it was, it was dark at first. It was dark. Everything was just, it's like all this noise and chaos around you. And then all of a sudden it was just quiet. And there was just like this dark darkness and not, not like, not, um, not to be fearful, not to be afraid of dark the darkness it was simply a like a soothing almost like a peace it was just everything was quiet and still and and dark you couldn't see anything there was nothing that that's what i felt that's how i felt but i knew i we weren't alone i knew we were together and i could feel him right right with me like almost on top of me on the side, you know, just like really tight. I felt him with me. I felt him as part of me. And I'm not sure I can't speak for you and how you feel, she says to him. And he says, I was just very aware that all I wanted was to know that you were with me, that you were okay, that you were that you and I were not separated, that you were not taken from me. That's what I, that was my, my first feeling was you, was um, Carolyn. And she, she was right there. I mean, it took like a second. And I, then I felt, I didn't feel as though, I didn't realize that I was with you, around you, or as part of you, but I felt as though, I felt big, bigger than 
I had been in my life. I don't know. It's hard to describe. I felt big. like a, I felt like myself as a big presence. And then I felt you as this small... Um, this, this small sliver of light. That's what it felt like to me. Like you were this little sliver of light. And all I wanted was to not let you go. I didn't want to let you go. And my biggest fear would be to not be with you, to die without you, or to have you die without me. And so this is the way, it sounds rather poetic, I, I recognize, and I don't want to, to romanticize death in any way, but this is what was meant to be for us. And the two of us, the three of us, together. I recognize that it's really sad. I mean, it's really probably quite sad to think about this. And I don't, and I know my mother has such a difficult time with it, and I would never have wanted to cause her any more loss or grief than she had suffered in her lifetime herself. She's a very brave woman. I had a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for my mother. Very brave, very strong woman. And I know that this caused her a great deal of pain, but I hope that there is comfort in knowing that we were together and our family was together and that is something that will just always be eternal ever after it will always be it's interesting to listen to both of you and your different views of the moment of the passing of the transition because carolyn when you said everything was like you you saw this darkness and then john describing that he felt big i'm feeling like he was like the shadow or this incredible figure in the darkness, like he described feeling really, really big. So he maybe was the darkness trying to protect you. And to him, you were the light. And I think that's so beautiful. And then you said that you could feel him all around you as part of you anyway. Like there was no separation ever at any point. And for him, he just felt so big, like his desire to, to save you and to be with you and to make sure you were okay was so powerful that he just overshadowed all the light that you had. And just enough was there so that he knew that you we're okay individually as a spirit, and then you two could merge or just be one. That's how it feels to me, the way you described it. I think that's incredible. But again, I also agree it's not to romanticize death in any way, shape, or form, but to give some kind of comfort to those who, who loved your family, John, especially, you know, and to your friends also, to both of you, to your friends. And and those who are fans and such as well. So I think that this will give a great deal of comfort to them to know that as well. Because you know, John, I mean, we sure could use you here in the United States in the political system. Oh, that's a good question. Before I wrap up, I mean, this was such a great conversation and thank you both so much for being here. Um, John, would you have run for office? Would you, was politics something that was on your radar? And um, he shows me writing like he likes to write and um, he likes political banter, you know, he likes to study politics and he likes the, the back and forth and the engagement and the, um, the system. Okay, he says something specifically about the two-party system. He's not necessarily, he says, I'm not necessarily in agreement with the current political structure or the two-party system myself, which is pretty much contra contradictory to what my family <laughs> believed, created, and continues to work um, for the people, but, and in service, and I have cousins and lots of relatives who are in, in the public service now, who are public servants, and yes, I think eventually it would have been my path. It would have been something that I would have chosen for myself. I, I, I could have chosen for myself if I had been asked to run for office. I think I would, and of course I'd have to ask my wife to make sure that it was something that our family, we wanted for our family, but um, I think free speech is something that's very close to my heart and the opportunity for many voices to be heard. And through the, our, our political system in the United States of America, we are very much a country that is proud of our voices. And that is a piece that I would most certainly stand up for. And through my writing and um, publishing that, is definitely a piece that would be a common theme for me. And so, you know, it's hard to predict the future when 
now it is different. You know, there's not, I'm not, I don't have a human life to look forward to at this point. It's hard to say what would have happened, what could have happened. This is the simple, sim quite simply, this is what is. But um, had things been different, yes, it, it, my life could have taken that course. It kind of seems like it's faded in the stars as a Kennedy, doesn't it? It, it certainly does seem like that is a de predetermined destiny. And I think my little sis, my big sis, it's funny. He's showing me, I know in my brain that, that Caroline is older than you, but you're calling her your little sis. Were, she, were you quite a bit taller than her? You must have been, because it's kind of a joke. It seems like kind of a joke, like he's nudging her, my little sis. Um, I think she can handle herself just fine. I think she can carry on the family legacy if, if she chose to do that, but that's her choice. Like We never felt pressure growing up. I know that sounds kind of unusual. I, I can say that I never felt pressure from my mom, maybe some of my dad's side of the family, but not from my mother. She always impressed upon us to be the best people we could be and that our country was important and we should be in service to humanity as a whole. And as Americans, that was our, we had a lot of privilege to be able to have so many rights that we have and to make sure that we appreciate those things and give back when we can. But she never impressed upon us, mom never impressed upon us to, that we had to be in political office or that we had to be in public service. There was not that kind of pressure. So if that comes out, if that comes out for my little sis, then she, that's her choice. And I would be very proud of her for standing up for what she believes in. And she always was like that anyway. She was kind of, she was always kind of bossy anyway. So I think she could handle herself just fine. So that's what I would say about that. That is incredible. Thank you both very much. So this is Above Life Channel and you have been watching a channel discussion with John Kennedy Jr. and his beautiful wife, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy from the afterlife. Remember the purpose of this and all of the weekly videos that I share with you here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope because this right now, right here, right now, this is your life. So live it, live it. Be sure to like this video if you do, share it with others that you think would love to hear from the Kennedys. And be sure to click that red subscribe button on YouTube here so that you never miss a new weekly channel. Be sure to add your comments below if you have additional questions or some other additional commentary that you'd like to share. Thanks for watching.